All right, so the first thing we gotta do is remove these two master cylinders. And unfortunately, we can't do that with the pedal assembly in the car because the push rods on the back are attached to the brake pedal. Oh, great. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we're gonna have to drop the entire pedal box and we'll go ahead and try and leave the clutch line here connected. I'd really prefer not to have to bleed that thing again. It took forever. So we'll just drop the pedal box and see if we can't disconnect those master cylinders. Well, here's the pedal box drop down. You can see we just got to uh, unthread these rods right here and we'll be able to remove these pretty smooth. And then we're going to figure out what we can do in order to make this. Well, I'll explain it better once I take this apart. It'll make a lot more sense. All right, so this is the clutch pedal. This is the brake pedal. This type of setup would be ideal because it creates a double shear uh, with the clevis here over the brake pedal. And what I'm planning to do over here is actually only have um, a rod come forward out this way and not off of this side. So that's going to create a bit of a stress, um, you know, twisting on, on the pedal as it is uh, applied. But I'm just going to hope that it's not going to be too much. So one of the things that I want to address is the way that this uh, shaft that goes through the pedal has the ability to move around. We're not going to need that feature anymore. So we're going to, I believe it probably has a, a spherical bearing on the inside there, but we'll take it apart and find out. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll make a push rod that comes off of this clevis, well, or one like it, and comes up through here. And then we'll make a bolt-on um, fabricated piece that'll be uh, essentially just, it'll have two arms that come up and hold a rocker on each side. And the rocker will be pushed by the push rod that comes through this hole. And it'll probably be oriented in such a way that it'll just, you know, push over and push the push rod on the... Tesla brake booster here and I think we will be in business so I'm gonna start tearing apart the uh, top of that brake pedal there and see what we got inside so it's just as I suspected uh, simply a spherical bearing in the middle of this uh, threaded rod so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to make the clevises that came with the brake pedal right here on this assembly work for this push rod setup I'm gonna do I use a washer to hold the plug in place and put a locking nut on there. I might have to shave that thing down to like half the thickness, kind of more like a flange nut because the uh, rod is kind of offset in the hole as you can see. I don't think it's going to be an issue. I'll have to finish building the rocker and everything to find out for sure, but I went to fasten all and grabbed a piece of all thread and was able to come up with a pin for the uh, clevis here so all I have to do now is create the rocker shaft I mean not the rocker shaft the rocker itself and uh, a couple of arms to mount it to the plate that I made for this and um, should be good to go hey what's going on everybody so I spent a good portion of last night doing some research on how um, people design their under the dash brake booster setups because it a lot of them utilize um, a very similar rocker system to what I'm going to want to do and it looks like this is probably going to be my plan. I'm going to have a triangular shaped rocker like this, that black dot will be the pivot point and um, It'll mount coming off of the pedal assembly, sort of like this. And you can see each clevis will be at uh, the other two points of the triangle. And when the uh, pedal clevis pushes outwards, I'm gonna move it out of the clevises, you can see it pushes the other corner inwards. So that should actuate uh, our brake booster pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out some uh, metal test pieces and see where we land. Hey everyone, so I took a little breather from working on the uh, pedal box assembly here for Yvette. 
uh, not because I didn't have any ideas, but more so because I it kind of changed my mind on the direction I wanted to go. The uh, little clevis parts here, I decided I didn't want to use them. They took up too much space. So I went ahead and ordered some, uh, some of these little rod ends and some all thread. And this is kind of the bracket I've come up with. I'm going to be running uh, the centered bronze bushings uh, through the uh, hole in the pedal and the rod, which is a three quarter inch bolt, is going to slide through those centered bronze bearings or bushings and it'll pivot here and it'll also be able to pivot here. So as the pedal actuates, everything will have a smooth motion. I don't want any binding with uh, my brake pedal set up here, that's for sure. So essentially what's gonna happen, you can see I've gotten a rod end for the uh, brake booster as well. We'll just have the pedal box mounted back up in there. And uh, this is the rocker that I designed. I'm not sure if you guys ever did end up seeing that or not, but it's essentially just gonna sit like this. And then as that push rod pushes out, you'll see how the other corner pushes in. So, I'll probably be sitting out here a ways and just pivot like that. And that's the way it'll work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my pivot um, assemblies cut out and come up with the bracket design for that next. All right, I got both of my brackets cut out and here you can see the basic layout. I'm probably gonna need to radius this uh, inside a little bit more on both the uh, flange and our pivot point and I still need to make the mounting hole for the uh, actual pivot but this is essentially what it's going to look like and hopefully it functions the way it should. I'm going to go ahead and uh, call it a night for tonight though and jump back on it tomorrow. So this is what a centered bronze bushing is and I got one for each side of the pedal assembly. The flange is a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be, but uh, we'll see if it works before we try and sand it down any. Fit on there is real nice. And then uh, we'll just take our three quarter inch bolt, with, which we also have to cut down, and it'll go through uh, like this, ju just on the other side. So I'm gonna measure how much I need to lop off the threads and go ahead and get that taken care of. All right, here it is in all its glory. I've got the uh, up and down pivot and the side to side pivot so we're ready to go with this portion of it and uh, what we're going to do now is make the mounting point for our pivot so that we can uh, get that mounted we're going to be using this uh, door hinge that i picked up from autozone it also comes with a couple of little uh, centered bronze bushings and that will mount onto the pivot point here so that it has a smooth operation so here's the finished product and you can see how it works. I'm a little concerned that it's actually not actuating the um, Tesla booster 100%. I'm not sure what the full stroke is on that. So I'll have to figure that out. But uh, it's looking pretty good so far. So the only way I'm going to be able to get the brake pedal to actuate the master booster more is to start messing with the ratio of the rocker shaft that, or the rocker that we've made here. So essentially what I think I'm going to have to do, I'm not sure yet because like I said I'm not sure what, how far this is supposed to push in, but what I'm thinking I'll have to do is drill a hole further in on this side and move this closer to the pivot point because that'll create a a ratio and essentially for it depending on how far in we go um, for every inch the pedal travels this will travel like an inch and a half or um, you know it, it's really entirely dependent on what ratio you choose and I'm not exactly an expert on that stuff so I'm gonna do a little research before I jump into that and I'm also gonna try and figure out the uh, full stroke of the master cylinder so I ended up just drilling another hole over um, as far as I thought I could. I could have gone a little bit further, might still, I'm not sure yet, but it really helped with the um, ratio and the actuation of the brake booster. You can see, I think we're nearly there. 
time, so might just give that a shot and see how it works out. I pulled my little uh, cantilever out because the uh, design of it with the bronze bushings, it's not going to work. I decided I need to use a uniball in the uh, pivot position there because both of the push rods are not perfectly aligned and through the motion you can see the rod end rubs slightly right there from the hydro boost. So what I'm going to do is cut this piece apart, drill out the holes bigger where the uh, bronze bearings go and I'm actually going to use a piece of inch and a quarter DLM tubing as a sleeve for the uniball that was originally on the balance bar from the brake pedal and I'm um, going to figure out a way to make this mount in between the two bolt holes right there so I'm not going to be using this plate design originally I thought I would have mounting arms coming off of here to support the pivot but it's not the way it worked out so we're going to completely redesign that I don't know if you can see but the bronze bushings actually started to crack from the uh, pressure being applied um, not equally so definitely need to get something better in position there basically is this is going to be the sleeve for our uniball it needs to be about a half an inch wide so what we're going to do is center our original hole with the OD of the tubing, draw it on the back side of this, and then cut them out. And then we should just maintain the correct center for the pivot and be halfway there. I cut our half inch sleeve here, and basically what I'm gonna do, like I said, is just trace out uh, where it's gonna sit on both of these plates and then cut it out and get it welded onto the sleeve. And uh, we'll be back in business now. All right, this is the basic idea. Got our pieces notched out and I'm just gonna fill in that nice corner joint that I've created on both sides. And then the bearing assembly will fit inside of there. And it will create a much smoother pivot point and uh, hopefully deal with that little bit of binding that we had. I'm pretty confident we should get that taken care of with this. So let's get this welded up. Well, I finished my uh, revised rocker and some of you might think this is stupid, but basically what I did for the attachment points was take some nuts that slid over the studs coming off of that pedal box assembly and I just welded some other nuts that thread onto the uh, what's left of the um, bias bar and uh, it works. I mean, it fit into the pedal assembly perfectly and as you can see it's basically what it looks like outside the one problem that I did have though is that now that all three points pivot the rocker kind of just wants to sag down and so I think I'm gonna have to get a second one of these bearings and double them up on this little 3 8 inch shaft so that uh, it stays in a straight plane other than that, I'm pretty happy with the way this came out, so that's it. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, and nothing's tight here, but you can kind of see how it wants to angle down first now, and the only way to remedy that is just to put a second bearing in there to remove the ability of um, swiveling at the pivot. So just order another bearing and that's what we'll try. The nice thing about my new design here is that um, the pivot point is removable and I can also unthread these uh, end pieces here to remove the bearing altogether. So all I'll have to do is take off these little jam nuts that are holding that bearing centered and just add a second bearing on there. I already measured this bearing's width is half an inch on the inside race. And uh, if we stack two in there, it'll be exactly one inch, which is exactly the amount of clearance we have. So shouldn't really cause any problems for us. I'm going to get that bearing ordered. We should see it in one or two days and uh, give you guys an update on how that works out and move on to wiring the uh, booster up. So that's about it for today.
All right, guys. Well, I managed to find a, a regular bearing that had the same ID and OD as the spherical bearing that I was working with before. And I got it installed and it operates much smoother now. I do have to tighten up the bolts holding the end links there, but that's, uh, I'm pretty happy with it.